Now I can finally talk about my CCIE journey, which includes DNA Center. I've got a lot to say on the topic. It's been a busy month. Let's go. So if you've been following me, you know that my strategy has been, now I can say, doing DNA Center in the morning and then studying routing, switching, and services in the evening. And that's been an incredible strategy. And before I dig into all of that stuff, if this is your first time visiting my channel and you'd like to grow your IT skills and your IT career, click that little subscribe button and the little bell so you get notified when new content comes available. All right, let me just dive into the CCIE journey a little bit and we'll get one thing out of the way. That's the routing, switching, and services. I've been doing that all in the evenings. I finished the NRC textbook. I've started reading the Route Switch version 5 official cert guide. I'm on volume one and I'm going along pretty well there. I'm through at least 100 pages at this point and I'm doing some labs as well in even G really so that I master all of that layer two stuff before I dig into the routing. So that's where I am in the evening work, working on routing, switching, and services. I plan on doing that for the next five or six months unless I get some really good dedicated time in the morning to work on it. But really, what we need to talk about is DNA Center. If you've been following me, you know by now that I've been hiding the redacted course and I revealed it earlier this week. It is implementing SD access with DNA Center. And I have successfully implemented an SD access fabric, both wired and wireless at this point. And now I've moved on to recording Assurance and the API with Python automation. So the nuggets for recording, implementing an SD access, they are shot, they are uploaded and they're being reviewed and released. Here's my overall thoughts in my journey of what it took for me to get to implementing SD access. Before I even dig into that, let me say this. When I sit down to record, my method has always been, recording for CBT Nuggets or really any training at all, uh, my method has always been practice it, lab it, master it, tear it down, then record it. I'm not gonna sit down and record something for the first time. I have to have practiced it, labbed it, worked through any troubleshooting tips or anything that could go wrong. That way when I sit down to record it, I know what I'm talking about and I know what's really gonna come up in the real world when you sit down to make this thing happen. And that was an important factor when it came to implementing an SD access fabric. So when I sat down to record implementing an SD access fabric at the point where I was recording, I had labbed it, I had done it, I had troubleshot things, and I went through a lot to actually successfully implement an SD access fabric. Ultimately, what I'm trying to say is that this course that we're recording for CBT Nuggets, this is the course that I wish I had. So let me now say this. There are some really good things to say about DNA Center, and there are some bad things to say about DNA Center. I'm gonna start off by talking about the bad parts about it and then end up with the good parts because overall, my sentiment towards DNA Center is very excited and very positive. The return on investment on DNA Center is extremely high, and by the end of this video, I'm going to show you why. But first, let me talk about the bad parts. My first and primary gripe when it comes to deploying an SD access fabric, or at least when it came to learning how to do it, is that there wasn't one good resource where you could learn how to deploy an SD access fabric. I had to look all over the internet to find all of the different and various steps and nuances that are used in order to create this. Now our course in CBT Nuggets is going to be one total comprehensive source that's going to teach every aspect of deploying an SD access fabric. So I used free DNA Center video resources, which cover a very small amount of implementing an SD access fabric. Then I actually got the $750 course that comes to deploy SD access fabric. I then read quick start guides, which were somewhat helpful, albeit somewhat confusing because things come out of order or some steps were optional where others weren't and they weren't very clearly labeled that way. There was the distributed campus guide, which I read through as well. The LAN automation deployment guide was extremely useful. That being said, LAN automation itself is very finicky and it took me about seven days worth of troubleshooting and I even had to dish out another couple thousand dollars in order to buy the correct hardware in order to successfully perform LAN automation tasks. The steps to configure a fusion router guide was also extremely useful except for one small thing. You notice these fusion routers here, they all point towards internal services, but they don't point towards the internet. In fact, I could not find anywhere on the internet a guide for a fusion router that connects to a default border node. I just had to figure out how my end users down here 
could get to the internet through the Fusion router by figuring that out on my own. I read through some Cisco Live documentation and then some more Cisco Live documentation with labs. This was pretty useful. Though I'll point out one thing here is that border node configuration changes from one version to the next. So some of the documentation was out of date. And then I even had to explore forum posts that show you how to do things like host onboarding. What is the host in user experience and what happens when somebody plugs into the switch? This was only available for me in a forum post. So in order to learn how to deploy an SD access fabric, I had to dig all over the internet. Now beyond that, I had to look at Reddit posts, YouTube posts, forum posts, just in general, I had to go everywhere to find little bits of information so that I could piece it all together. But I did get it all pieced together and that fabric is successfully deployed. And a lot of the other things that popped up were just bugs or finicky issues, weird things like it would go to deploy the overlay and then it would say something like your border node doesn't have a loopback address when it did or IP routing wasn't turned on when it did. Reboot those devices, try it again and it worked fine. So I'm not really sure what that was all about, but there are a lot of finicky or nuanced things that pop up when it comes to working with DNA Center and all of the integration processes too. The point is, is that I compiled all of these resources and learned it all on my own, troubleshot various different weird nuancey things so that I could sit down, click record, and then show you how it's really going to work, how you really deploy an entire SD access solution from day zero all the way to the end. Again, like I said before, this is the course that I wish I had when I started learning SD access implementation, but here it is now. I went through all of that so that you won't have to. So if you're planning on going for your CCIE and you're a little stressed about what are the actual steps to deploy an SD access fabric, I promise you our course that's coming to CBT Nuggets is going to be what you want to use. You will not want to spend your time digging through various resources all over the internet. Go to CBT Nuggets and get registered there because when the course releases, that's what you're going to want to use. Now, like I said, my sentiment towards DNA Center and SD access fabric technology in general is very positive. I believe the return on investment once the fabric is deployed is going to be tremendous. Let me show you why. So I'm signed into my DNA Center environment here. And up at the top, we see what they call the workflows, the four workflows. Really, there's a fifth workflow, which is where automation happens. But we design, deploy, and operate our network all from these workflows. And once the actual overlay fabric has been deployed or SD access fabric has been deployed, we spend the majority of our time doing the operation and optimization of our entire fabric. And this is what's really cool. It's not about the network configuration anymore. DNA Center configures the network for you. No, it becomes about your business intent. See, in policy, we define our groups of users who are allowed to connect to the network, and then we define what their permissions are. So once the overlay fabric is up and running, we could then choose to say, change our policy and DNA Center will just handle the fabric configuration for us. So maybe employees, members of the employees group need to have access to resources in the help desk group. So all I have to do is simply hover over this section here, click into the box and I can change my policy right here. You can see it creates the permit scalable group ACL for me and then deploys that policy to the entire network. So if you think about the hundreds or maybe thousands of network devices in your entire network where this information, this type of control needs to exist, it's all summarized down into one or two clicks for you. That is a huge return on investment because we can make an entire security change in our network in just a few seconds. But beyond that, there's also the assurance workflow, which is where we operate and optimize our network moving forward. This is where DNA Center collects data on the entire network, not just devices, but also on the clients and end users themselves, because it's able to capture authentication information from Cisco ICE. And now we can tell when end users are having experience problems. The assurance workflow shows data saved over a series of time. It goes up to seven days in the history. So we can see how our network has been behaving over the past seven days and if there's been any issues. So maybe our network is working fine now, but it was having a problem yesterday. We could still dig into what's going on and with specifically which devices did this occur on or which clients did this occur on. Beyond that, when I scroll down, I can see device specific information or what's really cool, I can see when issues are arising too. 
So if I go into my open issues, I see I have a DHCP problem here. I can click into it. It can tell me where this problem is happening and on which devices this is happening on. And I can dig into those specific devices and see why there may be an issue going on there. Beyond that, when I click into the issues on the device, it can also give me suggested actions on how to troubleshoot this as well as how to run these executions right now. You can execute these suggestions just to verify the issues are working correctly in the first place. So maybe I expand this issue down, I click show run, and look at that. It's verified that the configuration of my Lisp configuration meets and is in compliance with the actual virtual network configuration. The idea again is that I have a total snapshot of my entire network environment for devices, applications, and end users, and I can drill down into them as this goes. The return on investment for operating a DNA Center SD access fabric after it's been deployed is absolutely tremendous because the proactive management and alerting coupled with machine learning and AI to detect anomalies and the ability to drill down into specific users or devices to look at their ongoing issues. This is tremendous. Our time to actually work in the network and troubleshoot the network has been reduced to almost nothing. Now, let me also say this. If you're preparing for your CCIE exam topics, the big things that I would say is you probably want to watch that webinar one more time about how DNA Center is handled on the actual exam. They said things like you don't need to know ICE. The ICE environment is already set up for you. And the exam blueprint doesn't say anything about deploying a wireless infrastructure. In fact, it specifically highlights deploying a wired fabric. So our course does cover all of the items that are on the exam blueprint, but it does also extend beyond that into how you should actually configure ICE to work with the SD access fabric, as well as how to deploy wireless in the real world, because those are things that you're going to do in the real world. But I'll also say this too, the troubleshooting and the crazy nuanced things, I have a feeling that the CCIE exam environment is going to be airtight. It's going to be locked down so that you won't run into any issues when it actually comes to deploying the SD access fabric. So what have I been working on lately? You just saw it. I've been working on getting that DNA Center course out and in your hands as quickly as possible. I should be done recording for the DNA Center course next week before I move on to the next big thing, which is going to be SD-WAN. Woo, I'm excited about that. All right, that's been what I've been up to in the CCIE journey. Thanks for stopping by, y'all. I'll see you in the next one.